Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment and tell you how to read this little chart. Uh, I do find it still a little confusing. Uh, that's why I prefer to write it out. And then when I crochet, I read off my written. I can't crochet and figure out the chart at the same time. It's too hard for me. I know there are people who do it. <laughs> Kate Dudman, she's been crocheting so many squares for me. She just works them all off the chart. She's amazing. So I don't think she'll watch this video because she has other things to do. She won't even know how cool she is, but she's super cool. Uh, okay, so this is what the chart looks like. Um, this tiny chart has tells you here the chart is 21 by 21. So it's, it's hard to see, especially from my videos being pretty far back. But this, this is one square here. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And then your end stitch here, twenty-one. Now it has to have an odd number because you need to have a box on either end, a double crochet, a chain space, and another wall. So no matter you start with three and then you're always adding two, which still is an odd number. This first part is your trellis. Um, you can do the chainless or the standard. And when you've made it, it's kind of going to look like a bunch of boxes, right? I call it windows. Other people have called it trellis. This one's going to have 10. Um, I should have drawn them lining up here, but what you can't see is that when you put that rows two steps two and three is what i call it i think right foundation rows steps two and three and i put that tail oh yeah you can kind of see it in here. i put that tail right across so that's what this is it's covered up the whole line and this you would made it in step one but it's actually the third row on your little picture right so when you're starting here, this is row four, because you're going this way, but when you're crocheting, you're actually going the other way. So it's telling you we're actually looking at the wrong side. So this is really flipped backwards. And when you know that when you're working on the wrong side, anytime there's a dark black, it's going to have to go to the back because if you can see it on here, but you're working on the wrong side, you don't want to see it. it has to go to the back. And you're only actually doing every other stitch. So that's what this is saying here. So here it always starts chain three, that's your edge. Then one in the back, you're, you're ignoring this gap completely because you're only ever looking at every other stitch on the chart. So this one's black, so it has to be back. And then this chain space, two in the front, one in the back, two in the back. And then one in the front, one in the back, one in the front, one in the back, and then an end stitch, which for me is still just a double crochet. Some people have fancier ways of doing things. Same with this chain three. People have standing double crochet, I think they do. But that's for another video. I don't do them, so huh, I don't really know how to do it. So that's how, that's row four. It does like this. Row five, you're still working on the other side. Still going this direction. You mean, it's just that now you're doing the pink in your accent color and you're starting here I don't know if you can see that maybe my hands got in the way I'll have to look at the video and see so anyways now you're here you're doing accent colors so now you're looking at pink and the pink and you're still doing every other stitch chain three it's in the back anytime you see the pink and you're going this direction okay so in the back, which means you see a pink, it's in the back. You see a black, it means 
in the front. There's your next one, two, three in the back. And then you're still doing every other stitch. One, two, three in the front. And then this is your end because it's pink it's in the back. So you can see how that lines up with here. If you're able to just crochet, you know, you can just crochet as you're looking at this, all the power to you. I need this written out. I have not enough brain power, I guess. We'll call it mom brain, but I don't know. I can manage to do looking at the chart, but then I get confused sometimes right side, wrong side. Am I looking at the black? Am I looking at the pink, right? It's a hard skill. So I know so many people were asking me, how do I do this? And I really want to be able to tell you, here it is. This is how. But knowing that this is how and actually implementing it are two different things. Knowing that this is how you read the chart is helpful for some things. But if you still need to read these, don't feel bad. Like, I hope, I hope somebody is not out there going, that's too hard. Now I'll never learn to read a chart and I'll never be able to make it. Well, that's why I did this for you. You don't need to. Maybe you want to still, so it's okay. So then then we'll move to row six. I could use a ruler, that might help too, but row six, because we're doing it from the right side, row six and row seven are going this, the other direction. Now it's easier because you're looking at the chart. First we're gonna do black, main color. This is our chain three. Now everywhere we see a black because it's the right side, if we see black, we want it on the front of our work. So here's one F, back, back, front, back, front, back, front, front, and stitch. And that corresponds with here. This is our accent color, so we're starting here, and it's pink. So now, because we can see the pink, there are this is facing us. Anywhere we see a pink is going to be front. Chain three in front. And we're only reading every other box. So this is a front stitch, back stitch, front stitch, back stitch, back stitch, back stitch, front stitch, front stitch, end in the front. And that corresponds to our lines. So that's how it works. Then the next ones, you're going that way next two rows right so give it a practice these squares are tiny so you don't have like a huge project that you're jumping into and if you waste your time on a tiny square it doesn't feel so bad but let me know if that was clear as mud because honestly it's not super easy for me which makes teaching it I don't know I don't feel qualified but you've been asking so I wanted to let you know that's how it works